Welcome to the Quit by Healing podcast. Today, I'm going to share with you a life hack, a mindset change that has made a huge difference to my life quality. And I want to share this with you because it's something that's really easily overlooked. What I'm going to explain to you here is the kind of thing that most people don't do. In fact, most people do the opposite of this. And it's because of the media we consume, because of social media, basically because of the world we live in. The world we live in, the environment we find ourselves in, tends to move us in exactly the wrong direction. It tends to encourage us to do exactly the wrong kinds of things. And it leads to really bad outcomes in terms of your self-improvement and in terms of your life quality. So this, what I'm sharing with you here, is one of the greatest life hacks ever. And if you stick around to the end, I'll also explain what this has to do with addictions and overcoming addictive behavior. Because as it turns out, doing everything that I'm about to explain here also helps overcome addictive behavior in a very fundamental way. So let me tell you right away, what am I talking about here? The thing I'm talking about is basically to go for what you really want instead of what you think you want. And let me just give you examples from my own life to explain to you what this means and also the amazing benefits that this has. Let's start with fitness and physical appearance. I want to use this as an example because in the manosphere, in the field of like advice for men, I'm seeing a lot of of emphasis on physical appearance physical fitness right you've got to have huge muscles you got to have six pack abs you got to be have, be in great shape have this amazing physique and also you got to have you know the perfect jawline and the symmetrical face and the right kind of eyebrow angle and some guys are completely obsessed with all kinds of details you know the whole looks maxing thing right you have to do all the right things to have all these details of your appearance dialed in. And that's a pursuit that a lot of men are taking very seriously. You're doing all this work, trying to build this perfect physique, trying to correct your facial features and so on. So if you take someone who's doing all that, you ask them, what do you want? They will say, well, I want a perfectly symmetrical face. I want a better jawline. I want to have a great physique, I want to have visible abs, I want to have big shoulders, you know, V taper, all this kind of stuff, right? They could list all this stuff that they want. And then my question would be, well, okay, but what do you really want? Or another way to think about it is why do you want those things? What do you think those things will give you that you currently don't have? And there it gets interesting because for most people, there is a why or there are several whys behind this. There is something you're trying to get by having the perfect face and the perfect physique. And maybe it's just, you want to get laid. You want to get a girlfriend. You want women to find you attractive. And maybe you want this in a general sense, or maybe you want to find one really good partner. You want to find one super high quality woman who is really attractive and smart and kind and has values aligned with yours and so on and so forth. And you think that you need to do all these things, right? You need to become Superman in order to attract that one woman. Or maybe you kind of want to play the field a bit, right? And you just want to feel like you're attractive to women. You want to be able to attract many women or you want to have a choice in women you attract. And again, you think, I need all of these things in order to get that. So let's stay with this example. And there are more reasons we'll get to later, but let's say that's the main reason why you're hitting the gym and doing the mewing and all this other stuff. This is something I can relate to because I definitely struggled with women in my teens and early 20s and even kind of into my late-ish 20s. It took me a while to figure this out. And when I was younger, I would have probably also thought, yes, what I need in order to attract women is I need to be super handsome, I need to be super muscular, I need to be rich, I need to be all this other stuff, right? Well-dressed, et cetera, et cetera. Luckily, what I figured out at some point is that I can just go for the thing I really want instead of all the other things that I think will give me the thing I really want. And it turns out in order to be attractive to women, it certainly helps to be pretty. It certainly helps to be fit, but not as much as you think. And you quickly get into a zone of diminishing returns. So sure, having a fit physique definitely helps attract women. But if you look at what the typical fitness influencer looks like, they're absolutely huge. They're also on all kinds of steroids. Basically, I don't think a natural fitness influencer exists anymore. So they all have these insane physiques. And here's the thing. Look, if you look at fitness influencers, you get a certain impression of what it means to be physically fit. 
And if you see me next to a bunch of fitness influencers, I look tiny. I look like I don't even lift. But the thing is, in real life, I actually look very fit. In real life, looking like me is more than enough if the thing you want is women to be attracted to you. I know this might be hard to believe, especially if you're online a lot and like all of your ideas about life come from online, essentially. You might look at me and think, no way, no way this guy is fit enough, right? Surely he would attract more women if he was more muscular, if he was bigger, if he had broader shoulders, etc. But in real life, that's just not true. I am already well into the zone of diminishing returns. If I build more muscle mass, does that make me more attractive to women? The answer is somewhere between not at all and very, very little. And at a certain point of muscularity, you actually start losing attractiveness for most women. Most women don't want a guy who looks like a bodybuilder. So at a certain point, and, and basically every fitness influencer you've ever seen is already beyond that point, you are not gaining muscle to become more attractive to women. You are gaining muscle to basically get the admiration of other guys. It's only other guys who are into this, really. Again, of course, there are exceptions. I'm sure there's some women who are into like the muscle monster, but that's an exception. And what that means is if the thing you actually want, if the thing you really want is to be attractive to women and to get laid, then sure, getting in shape is useful to a certain degree, but there's a lot of other stuff that is actually far more useful. One of them being having the courage to interact with women, because when you have the courage to talk to women and you do a lot of it, you become more and more comfortable around women. And that comfort and calm and confidence is something that's very attractive. To most women, if there's a guy who is hugely muscular, perfect physique, and he's kind of standing awkwardly in a corner or just hanging out with his bros, and there's another guy who has a kind of average, you know, healthy looking but average physique, but he's being friendly. He comes up and he cracks a joke and he makes you feel good. He makes you feel comfortable and he has a charming smile and he just seems to be comfortable in his own skin. He makes you feel at ease. He has social skills basically, which by the way, social skills come from practicing like any other skill. So it's basically just someone who has talked to people who is kind of fluent in, in chatting with people can hold an interesting conversation. And it's generally just someone, and this is the important part, right? Someone who's who's feeling calm and comfortable and confident. And that is infectious, right? His nervous system state makes her nervous system state feel better. That is a way more attractive guy, which means that for most guys, if what you really want is to be attractive to women, you don't need to go to the gym more. You need to develop more courage and develop more social skills by talking to people. In many cases, you can even make more progress on this front by doing introspective work, by figuring out things like, you know, a lack of self-acceptance, a lack of self-love that makes you feel low confidence, that makes you tense up, that makes you overthink. Doing things like introspective writing or meditation or things like that in order to resolve some of that, some unwind some of that tension is going to do more to make you an attractive man than to go to the gym and work on your rear delts. And this is an important idea that I want to get across here. By identifying what you really want, you can get there much faster than by trying to get it by proxy. Okay, in a way, building the perfect physique is trying to get attraction from women by proxy. You're trying to get it the long way around, basically. And instead, you can just be like, okay, in order to be more attracted to women, I need to develop the skills and qualities that women actually find attractive. And muscles just don't get me that far in this pursuit. The same is largely true for the whole facial symmetry and whatnot thing. Look, again, if you look at me, my face is pretty crooked. I, you know, I've been bald all my life pretty much. I'm not a conventionally attractive guy. And for terminally online people, this might be impossible to believe, but I'm very attractive to women. I have no problems attracting women. And it has very little to do with the angle of my eyebrows. I mean, my eyebrows are practically invisible, right? This stuff just matters way, way less than you think it does. And you think it matters a lot because you're on dating apps and you're on social media, where of course, what your face looks like and what your body looks like is, is what matters. But in real life, how you make people feel matters way more. Whether you have courage or not matters way more. The state of your nervous system matters way more. And that's just one example where 
The thing you think you want is the perfect physique and the perfect face. The thing you actually want is to be attractive to women. And there's a much faster way to get it. Now, another possible reason for wanting the perfect physique is maybe you want to be respected. Maybe you want to have status and that would be among men and women. Maybe you want other men to respect you. There too, there are ways to get that way more quickly than just to pile on more and more muscle mass. And first of all, the same thing I mentioned before applies here too. In the online fitness influencer world, my physique is not a good physique. I am not, you know, quote unquote, fit enough. But in the real world, I am fit enough. In most groups of people, I'm one of the fittest people there. So in terms of like being fit enough to have status, to be like high up in the pecking order, if that's what you care about, this is enough. And there too, you know, it just means that it's kind of easier and more pleasurable to get the thing that you want than you maybe think. So for me, one of the things I do is I train martial arts. I really like training Muay Thai, for example, which is that the best way to get the perfect bodybuilder like physique? Well, no, only bodybuilding style hypertrophy training and also various substances are the ideal way to get that kind of a physique. But I'm not interested in that. I'd rather have fun while I'm training. And again, it is enough to get the attractiveness and the status and all the other stuff that you actually want. Plus, if status is important, then your capabilities in general make a huge difference. If you're a highly capable man, that is actually what gives you respect and status much more than if you just have an amazing physique and an expensive suit. Let's move on to a different example. Again, from my own life for this idea has been a massive shortcut and life hack for me. Most of us are in pursuit of money. We'd like to make more money. We'd like to be wealthy. And, you know, I think that's a fairly reasonable goal to have. But it's also worth asking, OK, what do I really want? Do I just want piles of money on my bank account or do I think that piles of money on my bank account is going to get me something that I don't have yet? In my case, the answer to this question was freedom. First and foremost, I want freedom. So back when I was broke and I was starting to work on my own business, yes, I wanted that business to make money and ideally lots of money. But first and foremost, I wanted freedom. And also I wanted a certain kind of adventure in my life. I wanted to travel. I wanted to see different places. I wanted to just kind of break out from what felt like the confinement of the town I grew up in. I wanted the adventure of like seeing places in the world and meeting new people and just doing something, you know, that's not the common path. And I started doing this and I started living nomadically and seeing the world in my mid twenties. Now, guess how much this cost me? How much money did I have to make before I had the freedom to start following this adventure? The answer is it cost me zero dollars. In fact, it cost me less than zero dollars because here's what I did. I moved to a country with a significantly lower cost of living than where I grew up. So by moving countries, I gave myself the freedom of seeing a new place and the adventure of meeting new people and like being in a totally different place and a different culture and so on, which is something I craved. And at the same time, I reduced my living costs, you know, rent, utilities, groceries, etc., significantly. And of course, I wasn't living super luxuriously. This isn't the jet set lifestyle, but this is what I wanted. I wanted a real adventure. I wanted to experience something real, not just like be in different five star hotels in different countries. It would have been a huge mistake for me to think that I want the freedom of traveling and it has to be, you know, like, I don't know, business class or first class travel and expensive cars in exotic locations or whatever. And so then I would have to spend years and years and years working in order to accumulate enough money in order to do that. Instead, I found a way to get what I actually wanted, freedom, travel, adventure, right away and even save money while doing it. And this way I was building my business and building my wealth while already living the dream. So these are a few examples where asking myself, what is the thing I really want has been a hugely valuable shortcut in my life and has given me a richer and better life and made me feel better about myself than I otherwise would have. And if you follow the general narrative that you find in media and social media and so on, you might constantly be chasing this kind of distant goal at the horizon, putting yourself in a situation where you feel like, okay, I'm going to be happy and fulfilled and live my life once I get there, but you never get there. Now, here's what this has to do with some of the topics that I often talk about on this channel, overcoming addictions and switching from consumer behavior to creator behavior. As I've mentioned many times before, addictions are usually some form of coping mechanism. 
there are factors in our lives, there are stressors in our lives, there may be some emotional pain going on that we want to avoid. We want to distract ourselves from the pain. We want to distract ourselves from a feeling of meaninglessness. And addictive behaviors give us temporary relief. This mindset shift of going for what you really want instead of what you think you want helps overcome addictive behavior and zombie consumer behavior in two ways. First, by pursuing the things you actually want, by fulfilling your underlying needs, you make your life more interesting, more worthwhile. You make yourself feel better. And as a result, there's less pain that you want to distract yourself from. You're more engaged in creating your life in a positive way. You have less reason to try and run away from what's happening. And number two, it's a way of training exactly the kind of awareness that you need in order to overcome addictive behaviors. Addictive behaviors have the same kind of quality of everything I've just talked about before. You think you want the thing, right? You think you want the thing you're addicted to, the thing you're craving, but actually there's something underlying it that you really want. And that true underlying need is not fulfilled by the addictive behavior. So there's this kind of illusion. You have this craving for the thing because you want something because you, you hope it fulfills some deeper need but it ends up not fulfilling that deeper need. And if you really become aware of, hold on, what is it that I actually want? And realize that I can go for that directly. I can give myself that experience directly. I don't have to try and get that experience by proxy through addictive behavior. That changes everything. A big part of this is awareness. And that's just a matter of practice. It's a matter of noticing when is there this difference between what I think I want and what I actually want. And it's just as true for larger life goals as it is for moment to moment cravings. So I highly encourage that you try this out. And the way you can do this is you can simply look at the things that you want and ask yourself, why do I want this? What do I think I will get once I reach this goal, once I have this thing, right? What do I think I will get out of it? And then look at the answer to that. And there's two things you can do. You can either dig even deeper and go, okay, but why do I want this, right? You can, you can keep going down, essentially. You go, okay, I want the perfect physique. Why do I want that? Uh, well, I want uh, women to find me attractive. Okay, why do I want women to find me attractive, right? You can keep digging. And also you can ask yourself, is there a faster way to get this? Usually the answer is yes, there is a faster way. There's a more effective way to get what you really want than the path that you think you have to follow. So give this a try on at least one thing that you're currently pursuing that you think you want. I promise you, you'll be surprised at how much this can change your life. If you have any questions about this, go ahead and leave a comment below the YouTube video, or you can click on the link in the description and go to the podcast page where you can leave an anonymous voice note. Also check the first link in the description to join the Quit by Healing community if you want to get access to the best tools for overcoming addictive behavior and leveling up your life together with everyone else in the community. In that first link in the description, you can also find the Quit by Healing program, which is now available again. If you appreciate the content I'm creating, I would appreciate if you could help me spread it further. And you can do that by interacting with the content. Leave a like, leave a rating, leave a comment. Whenever you interact with this stuff, the algorithms tend to show it to more people. And that really makes a difference. And that is all for today. So thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next time.